Hello, we are in day 24. I hope you have seen previous two videos where I discussed about API-led connectivity in one video. And we started designing our APIs using Design Center. And we started a basic grammar. Actually, it is um, it will take it will be time taking to design your APIs in Design Center because uh, based on the browser, if you press Control Space, it will take a lot of time to respond. I feel comfortable to design APIs in any point studio. So, in this video, first I will show you how to um, design APIs from any point studio and how to sync your changes from any point studio to the design center how both of them use github i will clearly show you then we'll start describing our existing grammar um we'll discuss about describing how to describe various possible status codes how to describe uh, request headers and query parameters and we'll see what are actually traits, how to use traits while describing our REST APIs. So let us get started. So here is my AnyPoint Studio. What I will do is I'll click, click on New. Earlier we used to take Mule project. Now I will take API specification project, okay? So, um, it is asking me, I have to give actually the API, uh, sorry, any point platform credentials. Let me check what is my login actually here. Uh, um, profile, what is my login? Mm. Zero to Siva one, I guess. Yes. So actually, I'll add an account. Yep. Zero to Siva one. I'll give my password. And I want to give an expiry after 30 days. Maximum value should be between 1 to 15. Okay, I'll make it as 15 and sign in. So I gave my credentials of any point platform account. I'm creating a new API specification. I can give a project name. Um, if it is a fresh project, actually, I can give any name restaurant. Restaurants dash SAPI. I'll select what type of uh, file I want. I want RAML 1.0. Finish. So it is saying the project name Restaurants SAPI already exists in Design Center. So if you see the Design Center, I already created this project with same name Restaurants SAPI. Okay, I'll give restaurants SAPI dash new as the project name. Finish. So it will create a project. It is switching to API design perspective. This is mule design and this is API design. Right now, it's switched to API design perspective. In API design perspective, you can see that on the right corner, there is API console, where you can actually see the uh, documentation generated whenever we type the RAML here. And in API console, you can see Git staging window opened. OK, I'll tell you, what is this Git staging window? But one more thing I want you to un understand here in Design Center, if I click on Design Center, you will be seeing mm, the new API. 
I'll refresh. Do you see the new API restaurants as API new? Yes. So once I created a project, API specification project in any point studio, it automatically created a corresponding project in design center also. Okay. Then what I can do, I can actually start designing my APIs. So I'll give uh, base URI, HTTP colon slash slash localhost 8081 slash API. This is what I want to give. Fine. See, once I change this file, it is showing me unstaged changes. In Git staging, this file is, it is saying that there are unstaged changes. So whenever there is a change, Finally, after doing everything, we can make this file to go to staging by just clicking on this plus. So any files which are staged will be tracked by Git. So in any point studio, it has a Git plugin and it can actually connect to the GitHub, which is managed by any point studio. So now what I want is if I want to commit these changes to GitHub of any point studio, what I can do is I can give the commit message. I'll say this is my first commit. And then I can say commit and push. Commit and push. So commit it to local repository and push it to GitHub. OK, so you can see here this is the github url of any point platform any point dot mulesoft.com slash git slash this is some identifier of my project okay it is pushed let us go and check here in this restaurants sapi new this is a problem with browser it will take a little bit time to load. See, is the base URL updated? Yes. So whenever we do any changes, and if I want to commit it, it is very simple to commit it to GitHub. And whatever changes are committed to GitHub, in the design center also it will fetch from the same GitHub. OK. Now we are already having an API called as restaurants s api um, this one i want to import it into an into any point studio and i want to make changes this one api specification restaurants s api new new i want to delete so i can delete it yes delete it now i can delete it from the studio as well i want to actually right now use the project which is already present i will show you how to import an existing project go to file import hmm. under any point studio you can see api specification from design center next uh, you have to make sure that you have added your account so from your account it will fit all the apis present here it is showing me the api which is present i select it and finished so that project will be imported from design center now we can write the raml here itself okay fine um so earlier according to earlier video this is what the raml was earlier we decided what all of the endpoints class restaurants class restaurant slash restaurant id class restaurants slash restaurant id slash menus etc if you see on the right side there is a window called as api console window where you can see the generated documentation just whatever we saw on the design center okay Okay, now 
we wanted to understand how to describe headers for example now um, under get get to slash restaurants i want to describe some headers one of the header which i want to describe is accept okay what is this http accept header assume that on the server you have deployed your api and whenever a client is making a request client may want the response in xml format assume that your api is capable of generating json xml csv and different kinds of responses now the question is how can a client request for the response in xml format or json format or csv format so whenever a client is making a request for example whenever a client is making a get request to slash restaurants um that you can pass a header a client can pass a header called as accept and the value can be application slash xml this is the mime type we are saying that the client wants or client will accept xml so by using this header call as accept client is able to negotiate the content type from the server this is called as content negotiation so if the server is capable of generating response in various formats client can negotiate what type of response the client wants by using a header called as accept but accept header can be optional mostly in every api mostly headers will be optional if this header is not sent we can set on server side the default mime type will be applications slash json or so right so how to describe a header called as accept very simple we just have to go here and write under get and i'll write headers see if i press control space under get remember two spaces are the delimiters if i press a tab in any point studio here it will give two spaces then control space i can select headers again see in the new line two spaces are left and here i will select the http accept header under that again what is its type i know the type is string and the default value i want to give as um, application slash for it default i want to give as application slash json and uh, description i can give a description mm. this is the header for doing content negotiation and i will make it required equals to false now i described about this header let us see on the api console if i click on get hmm, these are the headers under headers accept header whatever i described it is coming here right so um that's how you can define a header and there is one more thing instead of writing required equals to false there is a shortcut if you just add question mark after accept that means it is a optional header okay not only for headers for most of things if i add question mark that becomes optional fine now if you want to define other headers as well you can again uh, keep your cursor at same location indentation is very important and you can describe other headers also if you want just like this okay now i want to describe 
uh, request headers for get. So I will go to here, tab it, and write query parameters. Hmm. What could be a get good a query parameter for a use case? One of the good example for query parameters are pagination related query parameters, page and page size. Hey, what do I mean by pagination? I tell you, assume that I am designing a get to slash restaurants. Okay. Assume that a client makes a get request to slash restaurants. And in my database, there are 100 restaurants. Do you think the, the server should return all 100 restaurants in the response? Mostly, we don't return everything. Mostly, what we do is we return one to, for example, 10 restaurants whenever a get request comes to slash restaurants but how can a client request from 11 to 20 or 21 to 30 by using query parameters question mark page size is equals to let's say 10 and page is equals to 2. so what we are saying is convert the entire responses into pages and the page size should be 10. So suppose if the data is, there are 100 rows in database, if I convert the response into pages using page size 10, how many pages will be there? 100 by 10, that means 10 pages will be there. Okay, then I want page 2 as a response. So what is page 2? 1 to 10 is page 1, 11 to 20 is page 2. So the implementation will return response from 11 to 20 restaurants. So like that, these query parameters, page and page size, are normally used if you want to implement pagination. And whenever you are designing query parameters, mostly query parameters will be optional. So in this case, if page size is optional, on the server side, I can assume some defaults. Maybe my default page size is 20 if query parameter doesn't exist in the request. And the default page is 1. So we'll always respond with page 1. Right. So let us see how to define optional query parameters and give default values. Very simple. Under get method for restaurants i wrote query parameters and here i will write see tab two spaces i am writing um, indentation is very important page size and again tab uh, type is uh, number and um, default value i want to give as uh, 10 and um, Minimum value I can give, say 10. Then description. This is the page size for paginated response. OK, so like that I defined. And uh, required equals to false. Or I can just give question mark over here. Similarly, I'll just copy and uh, paste. Indentation is very important again. And uh, oh, I'll give query parameter name as speech. Uh, default value is 1 and minimum value is 1. This is a page number. Fine. So I defined two query parameters. Let us see in the get request description page size. You can see, right? Good. 
So now we understood page and page size. Fine. But I also, as we go on, actually, restaurants is a collection resource. Okay. Let me describe you now. What do I mean by a collection resource? Actually, in rest, whatever resources we describe, they are categorized into two types collection resource and collection item resource. So, slash restaurants, whenever you use it, slash restaurants, you expect get request to slash restaurant, you expect the response to be a collection, collection of restaurants. So, slash restaurants is of type collection of resources, collection type. And what about um, slash restaurants? slash restaurant id what among all restaurants we are referencing to a particular restaurant by id so this will give one restaurant so this resource represents a collection item everything in rest can be categorized either as a collection or a collection item okay now what about slash restaurants slash restaurant id slash menus one restaurant can have multiple menus right menus one restaurant can have multiple menus this will uh, for this uri we will be returning a collection of menus so again this is of the collection resources so now whenever we are actually uh, describing collection resources we expect uh, array as response or list of records as response. Whenever we are getting a list of records as response, don't you think pagination is common? Yes. When I say pagination is common, don't you think query parameters, describing these query parameters is common for that? So, for example, under slash restaurants slash restaurant id slash menus get request don't you think that i need to describe query parameters here two space are there okay so i will indent indentation is very important don't you think that i need to actually describe again here Yeah. So, don't you think here also it is? So now, if I see um, slash menus get request, see same query parameters are there here also for get request to slash menus, right? But don't you think that in the RAML this is like duplicate? Yes. So our RAML file will become too verbose if I start describing query parameters like this, paginated query parameters like this for every collection type, right? So I need a shortcut for it. So in RAML, we can create something called as a trait. Normally, what is the English meaning of a trait? Let me Google uh, meaning of Trait. A quality that forms part of your character or personality. Trait means a quality that forms part of your character or personality. Don't you think for all collections, it is its character to have high page size and page as query parameters. Don't you think pagination is a trait? It forms a common uh, character of all collections? Yes. So to describe such 
common traits. We can create a type called as trait in our grammar. How? What I will do is in my project, I'll create a new folder. Um, I'll give the name as traits. Finish. And I'll right click on this pro folder, new. See, uh, here I can configure RAML API fragment file, not API specification. I will use RAML API fragment file. Hmm. Here, the fragment type. I can actually define various types of uh, RAML fragments. The type is trait. Hmm. I'll give a name, pageable. Can give anything. I gave the name pageable finish. So you can see under traits, there is pageable dot ramel. Here, the first line after ramel 1.0, there is something called as trait. This says that in this um in this uh, ramel, I'm going to define a trait. So what I'm going to do is um I'll cut the query parameters cut and paste here two spaces are normally the indentation but that's okay extra space are also okay fine this is a ramel actually two spaces will be good but more than two space also the ramel will accept so anyways i'll adjust yeah in the same hierarchy hmm fine now, how to use this trait in the main RAML? Hmm. So I will I will actually uh, go to the top and here I will write a section where I'll define something called as traits. I'll write I'll give a name to the trait pageable, and I will have to use exclamation include traits slash pageable dot ramel see we have kept this file under a relative path under traits folder pageable then what i have to do is i have to configure get is uh, pageable see i can write get is the value of is is a list or an array Whenever you want to define an array, you have to write under new line dash and the value. Again, if you want to define one more element of the page, dash, then I can give one more trait if I have. Fine. Now, instead of using this syntax, there is another syntax to define the array. What I can write is in square brackets, if I write it is an array. Now, here I can write pageable. And if you want to give one more, I can give comma and I can write another trait name. So this trait, pageable trait, will get applied to get method of slash restaurants. Similarly, I'll copy this line. And OK, let me indent it properly. Yeah. So and uh, slash menus get request also is pageable i'll press enter tab paste it then i don't need to define query parameters here and uh, slash menu items get a method also is pageable here also i will define that's all so if i see the api console get request to slash menus do you see here query parameters page size and Pager there. Get request to slash menu items. 
very parameters page size and page are in the description good so you can see that the verbosity is reduced right fine um so again don't you think that maybe this optional header accept is also um, another trait for most of the methods for most of the get methods at least yes so what i will try to do is again i'll create a new raml ab fragment file trait and give acceptable finish so here again i will cut this headers and paste it here that's fine now i will define acceptable is another trait exclamation include trait slash acceptable and now here for get request to slash restaurants i will say is acceptable right so only i want restaurants is acceptable but for menus i don't want for example i will give only pageable so let us see here for get request to slash restaurants is there a query parameter is there a header called as accept yes good now you clearly understood about what are trades okay so what i will do is now i will actually uh, sync all these changes to the design center now you can see whatever changes i made they are in unstaged changes if you want the git to track the changes of these files you have to stage them okay i have staged these files and then i want to commit um, added traits i'll give i gave a commit message if i just click on commit it will commit to local repository and if i push head see if i click on push head um this is the comment and we are actually committing to master branch and this is a url of the remote destination so push this will push all the changes to the master branch okay so successful push it to to this url this is a url now if i go to design center and uh, click on this restaurants sapi i should see the changes this is a problem the browser always takes a lot of time to load that is the reason i prefer to actually use uh, studio see the traits everything whatever i pushed is here so that's all um we'll discuss about the next topics in the next lecture see you in the next